It is the Entrepreneur's Hub once again. I'm having here with me uh, Mr. Ali Zulfika. Hope I pronounced it right. This right. The this Managing Director, Kampala City Industries Limited. Good to have your company. Thank you. Um, just a good of you always watching before we get into our interesting conversation. How have you been? I'm fine and uh, um, given this time of COVID, we have been quite well, uh, you know, trying to be safe and sound, keeping our people safe and sound. So, uh, been a, you know, a challenging year last year. So, uh, we are doing pretty okay, as you know, given the conditions. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Uh, embracing the year 2021 so far, it's a new year for us. I'm sure, like you've mentioned earlier on, it was challenging for the year 2020. And uh, you've been in Uganda for quite a while. How do you find staying and working in Uganda? How do you find it? By far, uh, in the continent, African continent, Uganda is the best. That is what I can say. Good people, understanding people, good market, good governance. Everything has been, you know, it's, it's a right and very good positive environment for doing business, settling down as investors. It is safe and helpful, you know, all departments in the government, very cooperative. So all these have been a good, you know, a good, uh, what you can say, uh, a good concussion for business, a good environment for business. Well, um, when did you start and how did you start? Uh, we started in, the planning started in 2009, while I was still in Rwanda. So I met a group of friends whom we, uh, we had a plan to start something in Uganda and uh, that's when the planning, initial planning started in 2009 and the uh, project was initiated in mid of 10, 2010. So as you can see we have completed almost 10 years, we are in the 11th year now. Okay, well, um, just getting to know, uh, you know the, the entrepreneurs out there, they have lots of questions uh, yes. before, they, they, before they think of investment. True. They want to have enough, like bulk, yes. so they start um, and they want to achieve like all, they're thinking of achievements uh, there and then. Um, did you start with bulk or you started in <laughs> like so a little bit of... We, uh, we didn't start with inheritance from our families, you <laughs> see. First thing first. Whatever starts from a smaller initial start should always be a small, a cautious kind of. You invest a lot and then you get failed. It is a very big drawback in anybody's career. So always it should be a cautious and a moderate start. Even we can say on a smaller part. And then automatically you can't climb the top floor unless you go from the first steps. So initial steps should be very cautious and very safe where step by step you gain experience more knowledge, decision making, all these qualities automatically will develop un un unless you start small. If you start smaller, you take wise decisions, you read the market well, then you work hard according to that thing. So that has been the biggest plus point for us. We started very small. When we started, we had only 15 workers and only two expatriates including me. Right now after 10 years, we have almost 100 Ugandan workers plus seven expatriates. So that has been our journey in terms of the development in 10 years. Wow, you have quite a number of uh, products on yes. the market, um, uh, which is kind of a success to you, sure, that the success sure. you've registered so far. Um, what has led to what has led you achieve this particular success? Actually, uh, as I said, that in 2009, uh, once we you know planned for this project, there was a huge gap of uh, mid-range and higher ranges in Ugandan market, in particularly in tissue field. We the market was full of below standard products as well as only a few products that were being imported from regional and international uh, markets 
were of high quality with high price there was a huge gap for the middle income people where they can uh, people who don't want to buy the lower thing and who, who cannot afford the higher uh, cost items so that mid segment we targeted the mid segment we did initial market study myself i used to move around uh, every day on a motorbike to each and every areas like chikubo market all supermarkets then nearby towns what was the demand and what was scarce in the market we targeted on that thing moreover people require because they are paying to us they are buying our products they need the value of their money so that was our theme to start with that we should provide the value of the money to our consumers our buyers or clients that's when we uh, came up with the idea that we should start the products which are favorable affordable with good quality no compromise in quality so we designed the products according to that and step by step from four products so now we have around 45 products in the market low mid high and premium segments so we have covered now in 10 years we have covered almost all segments in in this particular tissue field hygiene so field. far so good yes, market so far, is so, so good, favorable yes. market is very favorable mm -hmm. and the thing is you see competition will always yeah, it has been there it is there and it will be there is no end to a competition but the thing is how you mend yourself you you mold yourself according to the competition and act accordingly without any compromise to the clients to the market that's where you have a win win situation well that's good to know yeah. uh, something else we can't leave out that is to do with the pandemic being here and we are learning to live with it yes Uh, but I'm looking at that range of products that you have right here at your company yes. that to do with essential products that are were most needed uh, during the, the COVID-19 season. And many other companies have had a blow, others have uh, gotten out of business. Should we say you didn't experience uh, quite an, a pinch during the, the pandemic season? Obviously, every business got affected. Several sectors, they were completely drowned because of this pandemic situation. being maybe it's god's blessing or being in the right field at the right time our products basically they are hygiene products so more or less the pandemic was uh, you know it was hurting our health and all these things and where we had to keep extreme hygiene uh, conditions whether we are at home or at work and personal hygiene as well so our products they are very much related to hygiene for example we use toilet tissues every now and then at our home napkin tissues while eating these kind of facial tissues for you know covering our mouth during sneezing or coughing so these are high quality products which has helped and which has kept us alive in the market within this challenging situation of 2020 pandemic for covid So and moreover it is like a kind of service to the society we never uh, increased our pricing or whatever we never took advantage bad advantage okay market was there but our there are two segments there is a retail segment and there is AFH AFH is away from home segment like offices where people go to work and they use washrooms and toilets out of their home so that is away from home range that segment was completely down because people were working at home but a blessing in this guys people who are working from home automatically the consumption of tissues and food products and whatever the daily groceries it increased when it increased automatically people started there were limited hours of shopping buying whatever people were very much you know uh, cautious there was social distancing then timings uh, close down timings were earlier so they used to stock tissues food products whatever which is required in day to day life so grocery section was always full for people who were working even from home kids were staying at home rather than going to school so consumption of food 
all other uh, you know supplementary items like these consumable items increased so that has helped us to stay afloat otherwise it was a very very challenging uh, season moreover we make the thermal paper rolls you know the bank atm rolls the uh, betting tickets and all those things when everything was closed people were using most of the people were using remote banking like online banking and whatever so the 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 footfall in the banks and all those places were also also less even betting companies were closed for quite a big period of time so that has hurted us in one segment but retail segment it saved us uh, from getting losses or whatever at least we survived that is what i can say okay well i'm thinking about the raw materials that yes. you use yes. uh, are they available in the local market see uh, raw materials for these things are uh, tissue if you want to give quality there is no such raw material which is available in uganda that which can match that high level of uh, quality we don't have uh, proper paper mills who can make virgin tissues high quality high grade tissues there are several types of tissues virgin blended recycled recovered tissue we have a couple of mills here in uganda who produce only 100% recycled so that cannot feed the market uh, in the, the situation their capacity wise or you can say the quality wise it cannot cover the market so the reason now is uh, either we we set up some one good paper mill which is on the cards from our side may in the near future but the right quality raw material is still not available in uganda everything what we do is our export apart from packaging materials we import all the raw materials from various parts of the world from europe from south america southeast asia asia middle east everywhere and from africa only egypt is the country which has a better paper mills of medium grade paper where we buy sometimes from egypt as well but mostly our raw material comes from southeast asia those rainforest countries who have enough uh, wood to make the pulp and then that pulp is converted into tissue so and then uh, european countries like sweden italy spain germany they also we do buy a few uh, things from europe as well so how do you make returns how do you make returns uh, to cover up for the expenses uh, for, yes. in order for you to acquire the raw materials yes. you see right now worldwide situation post pandemic situation in uh, shipping industry is very chaotic we are not able to get empty containers when uh, the mills they produce our raw, raw material to load them we, uh, there is a scarcity of uh, containers moreover when uh, somehow and the prices have gone uh, three times than the normal prices for uh, sea freight secondly the road transport as we are a landlocked country we have to use mombasa port Mombasa port the transport the trucks are not available if they are available there is a huge jam at the borders as you can see if it if i say about malaba border the normal thing it has become a normal phenomenon that the jam is 10 kilometers it it had it had gone to 30 40 kilometers up to bungoma from malaba to bungoma kenya side that queue was so so big situation is coming up better day by day slowly but that is the reason being the proper covid test done by our government officials at the border so that no truck drivers with who are positive or whatever uh, should enter our country otherwise you know the situation will go out of control if we allow them like that so precautionary measures taken by government we have to we have to cooperate and we appreciate that thing bit delay is there in raw material sometimes uh, we face a shortage situation for certain raw material like uh, right now we are facing a big challenge uh, the our containers reached uh, two weeks back in mombasa yesterday they started around 10 containers of raw material they started yesterday 
So sometimes the situation we There's have to too handle. Much delay. Yeah, delays and all those things due to you know shipping issues and all those things. Moreover, now because of shortage of uh, workers in European Union, because as you know the UK strain had come, they have again locked down. So the wood which they need, the soft wood, it is not available. The new harvest is yet to happen. It will happen in spring. So it has affected the price for the soft wood pulp, the pulp which is used to make tissues. So the pulp has gone, the price has gone higher. Every day the price is changing. Now it has become like, you know, oil uh, and gold. So this is white gold, you can say. So challenges do come. Every day there is a new challenge which we have to understand, think, decide and overcome that challenge. That is the life every day. That's a good mind. Yes. Yes. No, you have to accept the challenges. You see. Now, if you take your, uh, you, you pre take too much pressure, you will succumb to that thing. You will won't be able to make a good decision in life. Yeah. Yeah. So, if there is a challenge, understand it. What is the issue? What is the root cause of that thing? How can we overcome it? You think automatically you'll get an idea. You discuss with your team. You discuss with your stakeholders, and come up with better ideas to cope up with the challenge. Okay, well, just getting to know your products, you yes. mentioned about, for, you said 45 yes. uh, of them. We do manufacture toilet tissues. We have five different brands. So we have covered the market from the low segment, mid segment, higher middle segment and higher segment. So anybody can buy a toilet paper from us from 500 shillings to 3000 shillings, depending on their budget depending on what quality they want. So we are there to serve the market. Same thing in serviettes, napkin tissues. We do have four to five different types of napkin tissues. So people can choose from that thing. Then comes uh, for household and uh, restaurants and hospitals, the hand and kitchen towels. That is another range which we produce. So we have several sizes, varieties, and we are the only manufacturer in Uganda who do make authentic medical towels. You know, the medical spreadsheet, yes. which is quite necessary in this time of pandemic. Yes. We are the only manufacturers who provide the right kind of paper with the right kind of strength, which helps the hospitals to have uh, put them on diagno diagnosis tables, operation tables, scanning uh, machines, mortuaries, everything they use it. Uh, most of the hospitals, they buy from us, those things. Well, are some of your products recyclable? Do, are they, can they be Almost recycled? Almost, you see, paper is recyclable, 100%. Mm -hmm. Whatever waste we generate, it is always recyclable. Plus, we segregate the waste, white paper, brown paper, and plastics. So they go to recycling centers. There are people, there are agents who buy recycled materials, these things, wastage from us and they sell it to the recyclers who, so the people, they, they recycle the papers. For example, our tissue waste goes to, if you know Global Paper Industries in Mukono, yeah. they buy our uh, recycled uh, white paper, then they mix other papers and they produce recycled tissue out of it. So all these things, it is interlinked. So not even a single thing, it is there in our industry which is not recyclable. Then after that, we have the AFH series. We had branded it as Silky Hygiene. So the new types of interleaved toilet papers, apart from the normal uh, conventional rolls of toilet papers, we have tissues which in sheet form, toilet tissues in sheet form. Then we have the hand towels. As you know, due to the pandemic significance and the uh, usage of, uh, to, uh, due to, you know, maintain the hygiene, People have started using, understanding the education part has been done. Even our Honorable President, His Excellency has promoted these things that when you sneeze, please cover it by tissue. So people are understanding. This thing is on radio, it is in the newspapers, it is in the, your television channels. So people have understood, they have been educated, the importance of covering your face, mouth, everything. 
so the automatically the use of tissues have been increased you have quite a lot yes. on the market yes. and like you've been uh, trying to break them down yes. for the viewers watching uh, haven't you realize the confusion maybe among your consumers on what to choose or may maybe they will make a certain choice of say the tissue paper yes. and that will be the only one on the market that uh, gives you more profit one uh, good co one compliment i want to give to the consumers in uganda we as ugandans we are very wise to choose ugandans as as consumers they are very wise you cannot fool any customer first thing the basic thing is to be honest first of all with yourself secondly to your clients so the clients are wise enough to choose because they know you see a person having a lower income will go for automatically go for a cheaper option for toilet paper because for him or her that thing is secondary but for middle income as the way the middle class is growing in Uganda they know where to put their money and get the value of it. So we have designed our products according to the market demand. There is a premium segment which is on a very low percentage, but still we have to maintain it. That we should not let our premium customers saying that Kampala City, you don't have our products like us for us. So we have tried to manage balance everything from lower segment middle higher middle and higher segment we are balancing properly so as i said earlier that you can find my toilet paper at 500 shillings as well as 3000 shillings also there is a toilet paper depending on your budget and your likings we have given a variety in the market yeah so you see obviously people will choose you know, today I have bought, bought this thing, but if I didn't like it, I will go for something which is higher, better, which serves my purpose. That is the thing. Okay. Well, any future prospects are in terms of expansion? Yes, of course. Because uh, one thing I've, I, I realize is that even during the season of the pandemic, uh, last year, 2020, yes. one thing you didn't do is a cut out, uh, like um, drop your employees, you try to maintain them, which is a very good thing. Other companies have really dropped as many, many employees out there. Do you have like future prospects yeah. of expansion? We should first of all thank to God that uh, God has uh, given us the opportunity not to, you know, disturb anybody's, you know, jobs and whatever. We were in the market we were floating, but we didn't leave hands of our staff within this pandemic. Well, you've been here for quite a while. Yes. Um, you, you highlighted some of the challenges you've been yes. experiencing. Um, maybe just uh, to get to know about the, the Ministry of Trade, the policies, how have they affected you? See, uh, been in quite touch with Ministry of Trade and Industry. See, as I said, the environment is very lucrative and how does an environment become lucrative? When the concerned ministries and offices, they are positive with the investors. So that positivity has been there always. Moreover, as you said, as I told you, earlier the market used to be full with those Chinese toilet papers. Those with, you know. So, through Ministry of Trade and Uganda Revenue Authorities, those statutory uh, boards, which they help, they helped us to assess that we have the capacity. We requested them that we have the capacity to serve the market, but because of the inflow of all these imported substandard goods, we are unable to compete. Those concerned offices listened to our plea, and they increase the import duty from 25% to 60% on toilet papers. That created a good market. Right now, we have around 35 to 40 converters like us here in Uganda. Everybody got an opportunity. And moreover, as I could say, even in 2019, there were nine new factories like us, maybe on different scale, slower, medium, high scale. Even in 2020, only four factories got closed and two more started new. So, 
the Ministry of Trade and Industry helped us through programs like Bubu, Buy Uganda, Build Uganda. That is great, very good initiatives. We have registered and recently they opened a Bubu app as well. They are promoting the local made products on that app whereby people come to know. And they involve us as stakeholders in every now and then meetings. Even we did a lot of Zoom meetings, all those things with uh, like uh, statutory boards like UNBS, URA uh, for uh, this e-invoicing, IFRIS and all those things. So the part of the government has always been cooperative and educative. If we don't know something, if we have a query, they say you are free to come and talk to us. That's a good thing. That is an encouragement to any of an entrepreneur or an investor. That if your government is listening to you, nothing better than that. Well, before we let you go, yes. um, you know, people ask themselves so many questions before they get into business. Yes. I want to know what keeps, what keeps you going, what drives you, inspiration? And uh, was this your career dream? Obviously. 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 So it's been 29 years of journey in the same field. 29 you years. I was 21 when I entered into this field. Now I'm reaching 50. So 28, 29 years of experience. And the focus was not you know, diverted, what I can say. And main thing is, you see, anything you have to do, you have to do with passion, dedication, then honesty. First, you have to be honest with yourself, then to the market you are going to serve. Just an example. Have you ever counted how many tissues are there in the box? Nobody counts. That is where the outside products come and cheat us. We, there is a full load of information down here. There is a UNBS Q mark on this product. UNBS tests its dimensions, size of the sheet, quantity, quality, even microbiology has been tested for this thing. Then we are granted the license. So we are, we are honest to our consumers, we don't want to cheat them. But there are certain things, as I talk about honesty, if you come to know that Ali has started mentioning 200 sheets here and putting 180 sheets, that is 20, 15 to 20 percent loss to you. That means if I am taking 5000 shillings, 1000 I am cheating out of that. This should not happen. As for the young entrepreneurs who want to venture into any kind of business, first of all, be honest to one yourself, then automatically that honesty will pass on to your clients. Client will be happy that what exactly they promised, they gave me. That is value for money. Second thing, the passion, you see, sometimes you see, you never know what kind of interest you develop when you just finish your university. You choose a field, give some, ample time to that thing, to develop. Automatically it will develop you as a, as a, uh, in your career as well as your knowledge will grow into, you so see you go in depth then. Once you choose a field, you go to the bottom of that thing then. Then you come to know every pluses and minuses, positives and negatives of that thing. It will help. That passion should not die. Any, any time in, in any juncture of your career, the moment you lose the interest or passion for that thing, what you are doing, you are finished. So, okay, challenges will come. As we discussed earlier about challenges. Yes. Not one or two. Every day you will find few challenges. But how you overcome that, those challenges, how you understand that challenge, how you react, that matters a lot. Then third thing comes financials. As I told you, we are a group of four. We are four directors in this company. So alone I would have not made it up to this mark. So we joined hands. That one I can suggest the young entrepreneurs. If you have same mindset, same passion, club yourself, make a conglomerate and you start some business. That will help you out automatically. Your risk elements reduce. Okay, income will also reduce. You will have to share the income. but. Alone you can't eat a pizza, you have to share it, as simple as that. So sharing is caring, that's what we have been taught from childhood. So it's okay, share is less but even risk is less. If, by God forbid if the, you lose the business, 
your loss will not be 100 percent it will be only the part which you invested so you can still survive otherwise there are, there have been instances i've seen some young entrepreneurs succumb to the situation they started on a high note they couldn't manage maintain and they collapsed this should not happen join hands nothing bad in that thing four brains you will get if you, there are two partners there will be an extra brain to think not everything i say is right for example but if i have a critic my partner is there who criticizes me ali this thing we need to discuss about this thing certain good idea or some good suggestion can change the whole the whole course so that is the way and then some technical education what you want to do you need to get educated into that thing spend some time in the similar field as an employee gain experience see on a on a balance knowledge and experience you have to balance that thing this is the way that day it happens properly you are ready for jumping into the business so that will help the, the my message to the young entrepreneurs in uganda in our country is that you should first learn a few things the basics then you should have that passion then as i said work in that field for some time then you will be ready to face the market so our product goes from towards all the borders so that demand has been created because the quality is good now at least they have started giving respect that made in uganda is good <laughs> that is what we need to prove to the other markets the way we you know welcome by whole heartedly the kenyan products no oh, no kenyan products are good that's how we should embrace them. we should we should give it back that no they should embrace us that yes ugandan products now they are proper we sh- we can spend money on that that feeling comes automatically your sales market everything your market reach your your share in the market everything grows everything grows wow i've had a wonderful time Thank and i believe much. the viewer out there has yes. I've also had a, a, a share of all this yeah. it's more than one or two or three but at least we've had a lot of advice Thank for you. the entrepreneur out Thank there you. Thank you. you poured out your heart really Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for your you. time one thing i would just say as a message stay mm-hmm. safe keep safe distance follow the sops provided by the government if you are safe your family will be safe mm-hmm. so covid still it has not gone thank you oh thank you so much thank once again much. for the viewer thank you for staying with us and uh, well I, I, i hope you did write down at least a few things honesty working hard experience wow Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mr. Ali okay. Zulfika, <laughs> managing you. director Kampala City Industries Limited. Thank you. Keep much. watching Entrepreneurs Hub.